Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Leadership Forum, brought to you by the Recruitment Process Outsourcing Association. This is Lemis Aburama with the RPOA, and I have the pleasure of being your host today. Thank you for attending our last live webinar for the year. We're excited to be ending the year strong in collaboration with our amazing partners and industry leaders. We hosted six webinars this year and over 40 webinars the last few years. And we're in the process of planning some great new presentations for 2019. Our webinars cover topics related to talent, acquisition trends and best practices presented through the prism of recruitment process outsourcing. You can find these webinars along with many more valuable resources on the RPOA website. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by a new speaker to our program. I'm excited to listen to his insight. Uh, Joe Marino has served as Senior Vice President of Human People Solutions since March of 2009. As a member of the leadership team, Joe oversees humans consulting practice, business development, and has oversight over many of human strategic partnerships, including humans partnership with the RPO Association, which we greatly value and appreciate. Human has been an RPOA partner for the past couple of years and is actively engaged and committed to advancing the association and the industry we represent. We're great, greatly thankful for the partnership. Now, without any further ado, I'll pass it over to Joe, who will introduce our topic for today and the agenda for his presentation. Joe, welcome. Thank you, Lamis. Well, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. As Lamise said, we're, we're going to um, today we're going to talk about how to find the human, quote unquote, the human behind a candidate. And I'm really excited to spend some time with you, with you all today. You know, as an organization, we have been utilizing some of the techniques that we're going to talk about today for about the last 14 years. So while we're visiting, we'll start with sort of some session objectives, why we are here today, what the situation was with a specific case study with one of our client partners, which will give you guys some details around how this can be operationalized. Um, we'll go through and talk about the overview of a panel interview, which is the approach that we take in order to find the right candidates um, and find the right human before you hire someone. And then we'll share with you some results and we'll have a nice Q&A section, excuse me, session. Um, so today the objectives will be to, the first one is to understand the way a formal structured interview procedure can find the right candidates so that you can understand the essence of that candidate. I often use the term truth serum. We want to get to the point in an interview when we know that someone is 110% telling us the truth and we understand and can get an insight into who they are as a person. Right? We, we, we're not today going to spend a lot of time talking about job experience and skill sets from a technical perspective, we're going to focus on the culture side of the interview and the hiring process. We'll then go in and talk, uh, we'll talk through four interview questions that will allow you to understand the essence of the candidate. That's the truth serum that I mentioned a moment ago. And then we'll actually do a little bit of, I'll give you an example of what a panel interview looks like. So if you all have an interest in exploring this type of approach, you'll see it firsthand what it looks like. So a little bit about human people solutions. So as an organization, we've been around since 1996. We are very much culture driven. In 2013, we were ranked the number one best place to work by the Great Places to Work Institute in the US. I'm very proud of that distinguished honor that we had for the last 14 years, we've been on the best places to work list. So we understand culture, we live it and breathe it every day. And in 2018, as well as 2016, we were on the Gallup list of most engaged workforces in the world. The top 39 list was the list this year. So when we combine culture and engagement, we're able to produce phenomenal results for all of our clients. 
We are an RPO provider and we do provide talent acquisition consulting services. So that's sort of who we are. Today, we're not gonna talk a lot about that. We're gonna talk about how you all can hire people better yourself. And to the extent you need any help, we'd love to be able to chat with you about some of our solutions. The case study we're gonna walk through today is for an environmental care unit within a hospital, a large hospital in the mid-Atlantic region of the US. They, in the environmental care unit, it's typically a department that is cleaning the hospitals. Or if you're in the operating room and there's blood on the operating room floor after a procedure, these are the folks that are cleaning that up. It is hard work, it's crucial to prevent infections, and it also is a role that is not paid very, it's not a high paying wage, and there's often a lot of turnover across the industry. All of you are familiar with that. If you're in the healthcare space, you'll understand it. If you're not, most of us have been exposed to positions that where there are a lot of, where, there, where turnover is high. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. They do have a lot of requirements as an organization from federal, state, and county regulatory bodies. So they need to make sure that those people are trained appropriately. So the situation with this organization and the department we're talking about has 750 people in the department, about 50 of those are supervisors. The other 700 are staff workers, typically earning between 12 and $14 an hour. So in this department, they sort of had the typical challenges that any, or, or, that any department would have that has high turnover. Um, turnover is an issue. They, were, they are a union environment. Engagement was low and they did not have a standardized interview process. So they came to us at Human and said, we have a problem. Can you help us? We've heard about the essence of a candidate, how to find the quote unquote human behind a candidate. We think our department is one that's ripe for change. And we said, sure, let's come in and put it together a program that will help you. So some of the data of the organization before we introduced them to this, this panel interviewing approach, they had hired um, essentially over a five month period, 83 people, they had 54 terminations, 65% turnover, and their highly engaged workers through their engagement survey was very low at 23%. So all the dynamics of a department that wasn't performing well from an engagement and a hiring standpoint and a retention standpoint. What we did is we came up with a solution that would introduce the panel interview to a department that had many hiring managers, as I mentioned before, but also were focused on interviewing in old school ways of recruiting. They didn't really utilize behavioral interview questions, but they were focused more on the skill set, and their interview time typically was about 15 to 20 minutes face to face, and they would make a quick decision. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, our solution was let's change that approach. The panel interview approach focuses on having multiple people interview one candidate where one person leads the interview. It's typically three or four people in the interview on the panelist side and only one person is doing 90% of the talking. The other three people are observing and looking for things that the interviewer is not picking up on. The process is very much a structured step-by-step -step process. It's based on the benchmarking approach to, approach to interviewing. There are prescribed questions that we're following, and there is a framework that is pretty standard once it's set up. Uh, the whole discussion around panel interviewing as a panelist, again, sort of four, three or four panelists in the interview, it starts before the candidate comes into the interview, everyone is saying to themselves, does this candidate fit our culture and the values of our organization? Right? So you're sort of grounded, right? You're working really hard during the day. You get thrown into an interview. There's a 30 second pause where the leader of the interview says, hey guys, remember the first thing we're looking for is that culture fit. After the interview ends, you're gonna tell the candidate, we are going to debrief and talk about you. The candidate exits and you, the first thing you say is, does this, or the first question you ask is, does this candidate fit our culture and the values of our organization? And you talk about that. If the answer to that question is no, you don't move on and even talk about their skill set because they don't fit your organization. 
If the answer to that is yes, then you move on to the skill set and do they fit the role and all the other nuances of determining if a candidate is the right candidate for you. Okay, so how do you get to the answer of yes or no, do they fit our culture? Well, we're going to talk through some of the steps in doing that. So the rollout that we delivered to this environmental care unit was a two day on site program. It was split into two half days. The first day included getting all the hiring managers on board with the change of the interview process. They went from a 10 to 15 minute interview to a 45 to an hour interview with more preparation and more debrief. So we had leadership's buy-in and they supported the whole change. We reviewed the detailed questions. We actually did some mock interviewing. We were the train the trainer type of, we, we took a trainer, train the trainer type of approach and we got everybody on board. Day two, we at Human led the interviews in the morning. We were the lead panelists. And then in the afternoon, the panelists, we were the silent panelists and the hiring managers were leading those. And luckily in this, in, in this situation, the overall leadership of that department embraced the entire change management that we had implemented or that we were discussing with them. So it took off and went, went very well quickly. Um, I'm going to share with you two pages that'll talk through some of the questions. We bring every single person back to high school in the panel interview. So you welcome the candidate. The first thing we're going to start out with is tell us a little bit about your high school experience. Where did you go to high school? What were your high points? What did you accomplish in high school? What were your low points? Okay, you're going to learn a little bit more than you normally do about what is this person made up of. Their experiences when they're younger tend to dictate what happens to them in their career and later in life, okay? We'll ask them if they worked in high school. We'll then ask them what was the next step after high school. If they went to college, we'll then ask them what made you, what was part of your decision-making process in order to select the school you went to. And then we'll ask them about their college experience. What were the high points? What were the low points? You will hear responses that tend to be very personal. Someone lost a uh, family member, or they had to work because their parents lost their job. You start to really understand who is that person. Okay. So it's a little bit different than most of you may be familiar with, with your interview process, but it works really well to understand a lot about the person. The second page I'll walk you through here gets into the job positions that they've worked at. And you'll ask them typical questions. How did you find the job? What were you proud of? What was your biggest challenge? And then we'll go into four questions, which we call the truth serum, All right? We're gonna to start to ask them about their supervisor. And the way that we're gonna ask them that is in a psychological way where we're gonna use the name of their supervisor four or five times across these four questions. So they start to feel like we are calling that supervisor asking for a reference, even though we don't say that. And that's where the truth starts to come out and it starts to flow pretty quickly. So the four questions and the, it's sort of four and a half, five questions, the way it's structured is we'll ask someone, who was your supervisor at your last position? And they'll say, oh, my supervisor was Nancy Smith. And we'll say, all right, how do you spell Nancy's last name? And me, the lead interviewer may write that name down. Okay. Okay. Tell me a little bit about Nancy. How is Nancy as a boss? And then you'll hear the response. The third question is, if we ask Nancy about you, what would Nancy say about you? And you'll hear responses. Sometimes you'll, you'll hear candid responses. Other times, the, two, the second, third, and fourth panelists will start, to, will start to see how the candidate is uncomfortable in their response, right? Are they being 100% truthful? They're observing the body language of the candidate to really see, are they telling the truth? And then you go into the last question, which is, how many people were on your team in a similar role? The response is five. Great. How would Nancy rank you within this group of five, one being the highest? Okay. Some candidates are always at the top. They're number one. Some if in a group of 10, if they're at the bottom, there's honesty there, but maybe they're telling you self-reporting that they are a low performer, right? So you do that for all of the positions that the person lists on their resume. Now, if they have a 20-year 
uh, if they have 20 years of experience across seven different jobs, you'll cut some of those early years short, short. So you have, otherwise you'll be in a two hour interview, but you do want to focus on the last 10 years to go through this process. And you'll be able to see that essence come out pretty darn quickly. Okay. When we rolled out the program to the hospital system I mentioned before, I'll share with you some of the pre and the post data slides that that's we've experienced. So I, um, when we rolled out the program, not every candidate was going through the new panel interview. Okay, We had some hiring managers that were trained on the new program. We had some that were not trained on the program. The ones that were trained, as you can see, had 93 hires and only seven terminations. They experienced a 7.5% turnover. The same time frame, they had about the same number of hires without the panel. This was the traditional way, the 10 to 15 minute interview, not much pre-screening happening, a one-on-one -on -one interview, no, no training to that hiring manager, as well as no focus on the culture side of things. And they hired 109 people and they had 77 terminations for a 70.6% turnover rate. This number is consistent to what we looked at earlier in this slide presentation, which was a 65% turnover the way they were doing it. So in total, you can see sort of the total numbers here, they're not that relevant because this 41% turnover is really skewed by both the 70 and the 7.5%. So this actually led us, I've actually presented this information at healthcare specific, at healthcare specific conferences many times because of the nature of this environmental care unit. The nice thing about this program is it is really industry agnostic. Within human, when we hire our own team members, we use the same approach and we actually have turnover that's pretty consistent with this column right here. We did a refresh of the data that we looked at and the data period was from October of 17 through June of 2018, so it's earlier this year. And the total hires that we made via the panel approach was 148 with only 17 terminations. And the, our client partner transitioned the way that they were looking at it and they looked at it as a retention rate of 88.5. Conversely, you could be looking at that at an 11% sort of turnover rate. So great, so people are staying which is great. This time frame is relatively short. It's not over years, but it did have a material impact. The next thing that we looked at was engagement. So this, again, this is from the hospital's uh, engagement and Gallup scores for 2016 to 2018. The scores were pretty low to start out with. 3.37 of a Gallup score out of five is, is pretty low. Um, they were able to improve that to 3.66%, excuse me, um, but their engagement was the most material change. They had 23% engagement before. Now, just really eight months later, it was at 36%. They expect this number to be north of 50% once they've rolled this out to the entire department for more than a year. When they look at engagement across multiple, um, sort of the subsets of engagement, they, they had some low scores in 2016. The engaged amount was 23%. Non-engaged was the highest category and actively disengaged was second at 31%. So when we look sort of over time, the 2018 numbers are materially higher than where they were before. So the engaged percentage of 36% from 23 is almost a 50% increase in engagement in a short period of time. Um, the not engaged went down materially by 17% and the actively disengaged was trending positively as well, down from 29% to 24%. So if I take a step back and I, and I walk you through those four, uh, sort of the four questions related to the truth, steer, uh, related to the truth serum, I, I want to make a comment on that. If you all take a moment and write those down, you can incorporate those four questions into any interview you currently have, right? What we just described was a panel interview approach with three to five panelists, very different than what most organizations are doing. 
what I've learned is that making that change is a big change to your overall process. You have to get leadership involved. But if you can just implement the discussion around the supervisor, then you can get a lot out of that candidate more than you have before. All right? So I'll re reiterate what those questions were. Um, the first one is, who was your supervisor? And you asked the spelling of that name. The second one is, how was Nancy as a boss? The third one is, if we asked Nancy about you, what would Nancy say about you? Okay, again, using Nancy's name many times. And then the fourth one is, how many people were on your team in the same role? And how would Nancy rank you within this group, one being the highest? If you, I challenge everyone to use that in your next interview, even if you're a little bit on the fence, if this will work, take those questions and you will get responses that you've never gotten before. And you may decide to move, roll this out to more of the organization uh, with, you know, within, uh, or within some of your clients, if you're within um, the RPO space. So Lamise, um, I shared with you that I was gonna try to be brief because I know we wanna be sort of at that 30 minute time frame. So I think we're at we're at the point where we can have some questions. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Joe. So um, I, one of the uh, comic questions is regarding the video and the slide deck. Uh, people are interested in having those. And Joe, would you are you making those available for our audience? Yeah, yeah, we'll be able to make the the slide presentation available to everyone. Okay, very good. Uh, so the first question, actually, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this, and uh, <clears throat> I had the pleasure of working with the human for the past uh, couple of uh, couple of years, and uh, had the extra pleasure of visiting the office uh, in Jacksonville uh, a couple of months ago, and had um, a really nice tour of the uh, offices there and could definitely uh, see that culture that I heard a lot about, uh, the engaged culture. People are genuinely happy. The uh, proximity of the, the beach definitely uh, helps, but I also mm -hmm. know um, a lot of the human people are uh, very engaged in their community and it's a very unique and, and beautiful culture. So my question to you, Joe, is, um, how do you make this magic happen, basically? So what kind of um, character characteristics make a, a candidate a good fit culture at Human? Yeah, well, well, thank you for those nice words, Lamise. The main thing that we focus on when we're screening candidates is to see if they will fit our culture. And we look at our core values very closely we have specific questions that we ask them that will get to the heart of who they are. And we do use this technique. Most of the people that we're interviewing, we're interviewing for about an hour to an hour and a half. We're spending time to see if they're going to give back to their community. Do they volunteer? Are they leaders? What makes them tick? And when we debrief from an interview, we, we literally tell every candidate, we're gonna talk about you now. And we say to each other, is, that, is this person gonna fit our culture? And if we are unsure of that, we may bring the candidate back in, we may ask them specific questions, but I'd say 95% of the time, the three to four panelists look at each other and we all collectively are shaking our heads yes or no. And once we get to that point, we much rather would hire someone that fits our culture if they have a little bit of a skill gap and focus on developing them, then we then we would if someone has the skills but isn't the right culture fit. Very good. Um, I like this uh, next question, Joe. So the question is um, about whether uh, this process and the questions uh, cross over to different cultures and overseas. So when going through interviews for staff over overseas, does this method work from a cultural sensitivity perspective, do you think? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. So it definitely does. What we do when we're rolling this out to different organizations is we'll take this approach and customize it based on the culture of the organization, but we'll also look at the role. So for example, the roles we talked about today with the environmental care department, are roles that don't require a, a 
they don't actually require high school education, but most of them have that. They don't require a college education. So we tweak that so we weren't asking questions about college unless we knew someone was had gone to college. When you look at sort of you know the, the overseas component to you know for outside of the US and, and it, you know maybe not so much sort of Canada, but when you're outside of North America, the dynamics are going to be a little different. But the way that these questions are geared is that the candidates have the ability to share with them you know, their highlights and their low points from different parts of their lives and the different parts of their work experience. And if they start sharing that, if that's part of the culture that you have and you want people, you want to create a family environment, an open environment, you want people to be able to voice their concerns, then you'll find that out. If you're, if you're a little more structured, if you're a little more corporate, if it tends to be a little bit more bureaucratic based on the size of your organization and you can't make as much change, then you wanna, you're going to look for answers that fit your organization. Um, th the nice thing about this program is that, or you know, the interview program, is that you have not just one person making the decision, you have at least three people that are observing the candidate. And if there's any type of gray area between a yes or a no on do they fit the culture, you, you have an obligation as a team to talk through that. And if that answer is a maybe, then we tend to lead that's a no, <laughs> right? If you're not 100% sure, then maybe it, maybe they're not the right person. So hopefully and, that answers that, that question, Let me. See. Yeah, and uh, just a quick follow-up on that question, uh, Joe. I don't know if you've mentioned this in the uh, presentation, but is there a recommendation on the size of the panel? Is there like a minimum maximum that you recommend? Yeah, typically the minimum is three. So you have the panelist who is leading the discussion and then at least two other people. Um, usually that's someone who is a peer to the panelist or a peer to the hiring manager. In the beginning, when we roll these programs out, we highly encourage that there is some type of HR presence in the interview, because the discipline of saying, are they the right culture fit before and after the interview, isn't typically going to come from the hiring manager who's doing the interview for you know the first, first or you know, the first or the tenth time. It's going to come from HR following the process and holding people accountable. Um, you can have four or five people. We usually we usually recommend three to four in total, Amis. Okay, very good. So next, qu next question is, um, how long does it typically take for hiring managers to buy to buy into switching a panel interview approach? <clears throat> yeah, so that, that'll be impacted by the leadership of the organization. So if the leadership of the organization is saying, we want to make this change, then that helps a tremendous, that helps a lot. Um, we say that Someone has to use this interview for between 20 and 30 interviews before they really will embrace it because they will see the results from if they have 20 to 30 interviews, they hire four or five people, they're two months down the road with having people working for them, they're going to see the quality of the candidates and they're going to be able to show that it is successful to their peers and to themselves. And then they've gained some momentum. Um, what we did with this group, and we do it typically, is we do interviews. I'm sorry, we do surveys to the candidates as well as to the hiring managers at the three month and six month mark related to the change in the program. And then we'll take all that information, present that down that back to senior leadership and show them what the results are. And there's often comments that are around the investment of time. You know, they're investing more time in the interview, but they spend a lot less time exiting people and managing out or you know, individuals that don't fit their culture. And they actually get time back, even though there's a little bit of upfront investment in this interview process. Okay, the next question is uh, a little more skeptical. <laughs> so the question is, have you found that this interview process doesn't always work for finding a culture fit? And uh, if so, what do you do if a person is hired and was not found to be a culture fit? Yeah, so it's not foolproof. As we all know, people, I mean, smart individuals can try to, you know, can lie and you don't know about it, especially as you're going through those four questions, they misrepresent themselves and they, you know, they seem like they're the right fit, but they're just not. So it definitely happens where you'll find someone that is not the right fit. The approach that we take as an organization is if, if we find out that someone isn't performing, right, and maybe they're on a performance improvement 
plan, a performance acceleration plan, but we deem as a leadership team that they meet the culture and they fit the culture of our organization, we will be extremely lenient in supporting that person to be successful. On a contrary basis, if we find that that organization does not live and breathe our core values and they don't fit the culture, even if they're delivering at an okay level with from their job responsibilities, we will try to exit them as fast as possible. Because in the long run, they don't fit the organization. They're going to slow us down and they're going to have a negative impact on the rest of the teammates. Very good. Uh, so, Joe, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, before we do, any uh, final remarks or thoughts you'd like to share with the audience? <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Lamit. Yeah, thank you all for spending part of your afternoon and morning with me. Um, you know, if you'd like to learn more about who we are as an organization, you can visit us at humanrpo.com. Feel free to text me. I'd, I love chatting about just talent acquisition, interviews, culture. And we also, you can download our free ebook and other useful content at world-classrecruitment.com. And hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you, Lumis. Uh, thank you, Joe. And if you have uh, any more questions for Joe, uh, con his contact information is there. Sorry, we couldn't take uh, more questions today. But I do want to uh, thank Joe for uh, taking the plunge and uh, present our last webinar for, for the year. Um, it was definitely interesting to hear about the uh, panel uh, interviewing uh, for um, uh, culture fit and uh, values. And um, I'll look forward to having you back sometime soon, Joe. Thank you, Lamisa. It would be my pleasure. Absolutely. Folks, uh, we have sincerely enjoyed being with you today. And uh, we invite you to be actively involved with the RPOA. Uh, please take the survey or email us. Tell us what you like to uh, what what you like us to cover uh, in future webinars. Um, so we're passionate about spreading the word about RPO and the profound impact it has on people and organizations through our programs and resources. You can be part of our mission. Stay tuned uh, for more ways to be involved and contribute to the RPOA uh, coming next year. Thank you again for being with us. This is Lemis Aburama signing off for 2018. Have a wonderful end to, to the year. Bye, everyone.